Previously on Super Modded Fallout. Huh, so I really. Is it really that you have to shoot the ladies? That's kind of, uh. Weird? Insulting. Yeah. And now you're pretty much caught up. Hello, welcome to Super Modded Fallout. I'm Kyle. I'm Kira. And today we're doing Old World Blues. Uh, we first have to actually walk there. This time we're gonna take Mr. House with us. I mean, we're not gonna get his ending, so I think it's the least we can do. And we might find some familiar technology. I think Mr. House will be very well suited there. All right. Okay, we gotta head south of Nipton. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a uh, there is a radio message that takes us there, but it's music, so can't be playing that. Hmm. Oh my goodness! Did I not turn down the? Look away. <laughs> radio, you know, copyright and stuff. Okay. So, uh, we're going south of the town that the Legion burned down. I didn't know there was, like, a trailer park in the back of Nipton. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of rad scorpions and stuff back there. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's more we can kill coming up. Oh, no. Whoa, what is that? Okay, fiends, crazed raiders, missiles? Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's just a battle nope. droid. Okay, well, they're all bad guys. I was worried we'd have to save someone. What gun are you using? The hollow rifle. It's a pretty, pretty nifty gun. Cool. I mean, it's not like we got anything that great in Zion besides the Tommy gun. Mm -hmm. Oh, you like that? Watch out! Oh no! Stop! Oh, no wonder they all got explosives. Yeah. Lord okay. Death of Murder Mountain. <laughs> I don't think that's, I said that. Uh, that's pretty funny. Oh, alien power cells? How'd you... you How have... did he get those? Well, he's a crazed raider, so I'm guessing he's just, like, special. Like, it's like a reward for having killed him. I suppose. Okay. So we took out those people. Did not really get much out of it, but whatever. <laughs> okay, let's drop the extra ammo, because we're only going to be able to take so much with us again. Yeah. Token of Surrender, where do we even get that? I have no clue. Okay. Nothing happened since the midnight showing at the Mojave Drive-In hasn't started yet. Oh, that's right, because the quest is actually called uh, Midnight Science Fiction something feature. Okay, so let's just wait till midnight. This is going to be fun. This is my favorite DLC. Alright, sounds like it'll be fun. Yeah, there will be a bit of dialogue in this one, though. You want to see combat? Probably going to have to wait till the next one. No, no, wait, no, stop, stop! Crap, we're late. Oh, okay, well, maybe not too late. The crash satellite seems to be the source of the strange transmission. Old World Blues is wrap up. You have a premonition that you'll be unable to return to the Mojave until you solve all of the mysteries of Big Empty, and you will be able to take anything you can carry with you. Oh. I'm sorry, I thought this one was one of the ones that was limited. Oh well. Mm. Let's save to be sure. Okay, you ready to go? Yeah. Let's take a closer look.
In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force field particle research, Autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the Dome, a huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war, fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the minds and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the big empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question. Nice. <laughs> I love wacky yeah. science fiction, and this DLC has more so than any of the rest of Fallout. Yeah. We have strange surgical scars around our head, chest, and back. Oh. <laughs> we have a patient gown. <laughs> Find out where the hell you are. Hmm. Some files are missing. I suppose we have to find them. A strange feeling of pacifism comes over you, and you cannot draw your weapon. I really can't. Hmm. Oh. I thought I heard Okay, him. nope, nope, nope. That was really dumb spawning. Co uh, companions aren't naturally allowed into the DLC in the main game that's part of the mods. Uh, yeah. But I don't see what, what happened there. I thought Okay, that. okay. See, uh, our companions are spawning inside us when we go up to talk. So I want to tell them to wait. Okay. It's kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. Come on. I wonder what these scientists are up to after all these years. Fine. 
Don't dally. I thought I heard the pacification field kick in. All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder! You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain! The collective geniuses of... We! By Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, H? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. A to sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now, now... Great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? Uh, which one looks appealing? How are you all speaking through that one voice box? Did, did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Boros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite! Here, in the dome! Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse! Now we've got lobotomites! Dalla! Get the spray before it excretes all over everything! Lobotomite? Dr. Klein, if my hypothesis is correct, this lobotomite is the repository of the brain we sent the signal to, the skin envelope once containing it. If so... It's proof that there may indeed be something beyond the crater. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. I know what it is, Dollar. I want to know why it's down here. With its... its limbs all over everything. And... are those... penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Little teddy bear toes. Penises are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. I don't recall a human penis ever being that large. It depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static, these lobotomites confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. Okay, I completely forgot that conversation was in there, and apparently the ESRB has looser standards for the DLC. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what um, you one of the speech ones? Hold up one finger, point at self, point at them, hold up five fingers. Now it's holding up an array of fully erect hand penises. If it tries to insert them, activate vivisectors. Dr. Klein, wait. I... I don't believe those gestures were random. Random at all. It's been following our conversation. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boros's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Ace, have you been in the Mentats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are. As usual. Lobotomite, do you understand me? Can you speak? Um... You want to say yes? Uh, yes, I'm guessing that crash satellite was yours. 
Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. He's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? Our efforts have turned against us. In playing God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled this skin envelope with... awareness. A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait. If what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us... Then this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein, a transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us. It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain. Big fools, all of you. It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone, a zone that is, yes, forbidden to you! Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine! Even the technology sealed in the Big Mountain Research Centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. What? Ask the lobotomite for help? A, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent, perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. <laughs> you removed my brain? We removed your brain, yes. So soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils. The Tesla coils. The coils of Nikola Tesla. Your brain has been replaced with advanced technologies. Your head can no longer be crippled and is resistant to chem addiction and shock from bodily damage. Yeah, eight, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the, what, the, um, uh... The Tesla coils in its head! This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. Um...
Medicine? That doesn't explain the laser sutures on my chest and on my spine. Darla, was it necessary this time? I assume full responsibility. I take my duties in the prodding and excision of living, breathing tissue quite seriously. Although in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. The scars on your chest seem to confirm what the think tank is saying. You cannot be poisoned and filters in your artificial blood pump will regulate bleeding and healing, allowing all healing items to function at a high, higher level. Robots are now confused by you and 50% less likely to store a critical hit. We lost our heart. <laughs> oh wait, I mean, second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Due to your complications with the procedure, your spine has been replaced as well. Your torso can no longer be crippled, and uh, your strength and stuff has been increased. Spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. <laughs> Which one? You took out my brain, heart, and spine. That auto-dock junk heap was one of Mobius's creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius! Flush! That is the sound of flushing! Why, the Fisher of Rolando! Enough of this biological surgery talk! Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. <laughs> Somehow, science. <laughs> you said something about needing technologies to stop Mobius. Yes. It is our only chance, a desperate plan that came to us after Mobius's first broadcast. Maybe, just maybe, if we reclaim these buried technologies, we can put an end to Mobius and the horrors spawning from the Forbidden Zone. What exactly is the plan? You're losing me in the generalities. I need specifics. The plan was very complicated. We are still calculating how it would work if it succeeded. That is our part of the plan. <laughs> Why me? Can't you do it? Um, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> no? Why not? You are equipped to retrieve the technologies with your primitive form. We are not. It's kind of embarrassing. You have hands, and uh, a heartbeat, sort of, and eyes, mostly the hands. There's door handles and lockers and... Enough! We need your help. Will you help us? Okay, fine, I'll help. What do you need me to do? Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, uh, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eight transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um... They, well, move sometimes, or get buried, or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. 
This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good. For us. Um, what are these technologies? The technologies are the X2 transmitter antenna array, used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic cardiac dampening sneaky stealth suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And eight sonic sound wave emitter projecto gun, able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great bio gel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal, uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old world gestures lightly. <laughs> um, the faster... Uh, did you want to say one? that one? Yeah. Alright, what if I take my time, explore the crater? What illogic is this? Keep your filthy penis-tipped feet out of our labs and secrets! There are things here no lobotomite was meant to see. Things that would astound and possibly terrify. Terrify! Yeah, we don't come into your lab and decant your solutions. Only the magnificence of our monitors allow for true comprehension of the wonders of Big Mountain. Shield your jellied eyes lest they burn from your skull. <laughs> uh, uh, guess I better get walking then. I mean, I kind of want to do exploring. I just don't know if I want to admit that. Yeah, that's true. So which one do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, just guess I better get walking then. Ah, that is correct. You must walk upon your many penis feet. Much slower than our advanced hovering robotical frames. The little teddy bear could always run right into the pylon perimeter on its thick, turgid feet, returning it to us quickly and directly, directly. Pylons? What's pylons? The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all. Get too close to the blinking posts and the proximity warning shall be your warning. You are too close. If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. So I can't leave? Oh, uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? <laughs> Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module! 
<laughs> How about this one? For the love, please stop fighting. It is truly the end of all intelligence when a lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses. So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun, then what in Heisenberg's name do we need from X8? Anyone? I believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun. It was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged. We just don't know the frequency. And it is lost in X8, just as X8 is forever lost to us. The sadness of my high school days, the sadness of my youth, my youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Fink Tattletail and all the kids you hated, you little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sonjaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. Ooh. All right. All antibacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate codes view from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your hands. That was disturbing. Very disturbing. Uh... Energy cells have a high expenditure rate. Some extra reserve cells could offset that. Hmm, yes, I believe Watt's electronics tended to make the battery shelf life on the low end. They certainly did. Batteries for my vib vivisectors would always come up short right before climax. I think Watt's manufactured hollow discs, or was it hollow tapes? Never can keep those too straight. Anyway, we're out of small energy cells. Dala. You have some? Why do we... Actually, never mind. I don't even want to know. And no, I don't want to handle your batteries. Just pass them on to the lobotomite yourself. <laughs> nice. This should be enough. No, no, let's say this one. The, uh, the, uh, gun's 50. All right, the sonic gun looks like an energy projectile. Got anything that spits lead? What did it say? Spits lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Okay. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray, filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wooing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If we're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns? Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Gun. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, Lobotomite? 
Um, this gun looks really hungry. I'd like to make sure it gets fed a lots of bullets. Fine. Moros, more ammo. The good stuff. Top shelf ammunition. Let's see. Hollow point? That's worthless, but tasty. Oh, and here's some JFP. As if bullets need jackets. The JFP might make it ill and poop a lot, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. Nice. This should be enough. Uh, uh, careful where you're pointing that. That device wasn't always a weapon. It was more like a force field kind of thing. Once. Force fields prevent us from moving. Forward or backward. They are irritating. The sonic emitter was specially designed to disable our own safety fields here in Big Mountain. When some of us lost our access passes, Dr. O... That only happened once! And I know you were behind still fielding my lab keys, Dalla. You formographer. Dr. O, you rewind that comment. Plenty of rewinding already going on in your formography tapes! Surprise the things don't snap out of their cases with repeated observations. <laughs> Wait, so this gun you gave me can disable force fields? Yes. Maybe. Well, no, not currently. Yeah, we lost that part of the schematics. Or Boros did. In one of his stupid labs. Or inside one of his stupid pets. It is lost. All questions lead to this conclusion. The blue fields within Big Mountain shall be fielded with force. Forever. <laughs> um, all of the um, options are kind of ending the conversation. Uh, what do you want to say? This one sounds the nicest. All right, if there's nothing more, I need to stop Mobius. Fine, so, yes, get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Um... Oh, I'll be sure not to tamper with anything, I promise. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? But, it's Dr. Klein, the lobotomite will need rest, recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers, so it might be stared at. My monitor radar slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in. We could give it Mobius's old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there. With my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free has swayed me. Here, I present the Sync Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. <laughs> okay, so I want to just do this one. Um, I can trade with the sink intelligence, then I'll need something to activate that function, won't I? I cannot dispute your logic. 
Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What, like stuff? Things? Yes, things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trick the sink's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive, and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid chip chokes on them. <laughs> Let's get more. <laughs> this amount clearly represents a deficiency in the amount of caps needed. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simplistic need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. <laughs> Let's get more. <laughs> I'd hate to come back and ask for more. A little extra would guarantee you're not disturbed. If I were not as intelligent as I am, I would feel as if perhaps I'm being tricked. Impossible. Oh. More. Why don't you make the lobotomite a bottle cap factory, Klein? Or better yet, give it a ton of things to activate the chip. Aw, oh, man. Oh, man. We don't have enough to get the rest. Oh, well. Oh, well let's that just sucks. It'd let's be just, so cool. Let's just say it and fail anyway. Fine. The ton of things sounds good. No. If those don't work, then you will have to sell it your nose, or some of your penises. <laughs> this chip looks like it was mass-produced. Are there other chips? Are there other chips? Are you echoing what he said, or are you asking for real? He's asking, yes. Dr. Klein, there are many other personalities. If you recall, you hurled them off the sink balcony after your argument with Mobius. It is not an argument if one is clearly right and the other is clearly wrong. I remember now. Yes, Lobotomite, there are other chips. If you want, find them. I believe they're stored on holotapes in many of our facilities. But you should stay out of those. No exploring and discovering things. The sink central intelligence should be enough for your <laughs> needs. Okay. Um, that one? Whichever. It doesn't matter. Alright. Alright, having a store available would be helpful. It has a store connection, right? Yes. You may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go man your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children. Okay. That was a long conversation. And it was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. I hope, I hope the viewers hope you guys like it. But, now that we've spoken them to them all together, let's go speak to them individually. More talking. <laughs> Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. Um. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'd be honored if I could hear any knowledge the think tank had to share on the sciences. Why, yes. We are filled with the knowledge you speak of. If you wish to know more, simply ask the others. They can help you. Okay. Wait, let me back up. Did you re Okay. Huh. So, which one... Do you want to ask him these, or not? Eh, not right now. We should introduce ourselves to the others. Wait, this one leads to more questions. Alright, I have some questions about this brain extraction you all performed. 
Well, we didn't actually do it. We tried to clean up after, as always, but usually the auto dock runs on remote. But we programmed it, or Mobius did. Still, this new wrinkle with the Tesla coils in your skull was unexpected. I mean, we predicted we'd have a breakthrough eventually, but... Dala knows more. She supervised your spine peel and the heart circumcision, then dumped them both into the tanks in the sink above. Quite sanitary. Sure took her time. She always takes longer than projected with lobotomite surgeries. Not sure why. You said before that Mobius might have my brain? Yes. In all probable likelihoods, yes. Possibly. That it may have gone to Mobius is merely an inkling. I don't know why, but it may be something involving the surgery code. Actually, I don't know. All I know is it misplaced itself, or it floated off. They get into robots sometimes and go on a tear. <sighs> Um, what's this auto-doc surgery code you mentioned? Mobius' legacy code was in the old auto-doc. Yes, it fried itself after your procedure so he couldn't tell for sure. It is unfortunate. We would have benefited from knowing how the breakthrough occurred. Even if we installed another chip, the information is lost. Mobius set up the Autodoc medical routine, so you think he's responsible for the post-organ dump? Yes. Always leaves back doors into things. Have to keep finding them and closing them. The Autodoc is now erased of his routines. It was thorough. Only Mobius would know for sure what happened with the procedure. Perhaps. Well, and your brain, of course. It would know as well. My... my brain would know? It can communicate the procedure when we examine it. It is conceivable to trace its surgical scalpel prints once we have the brain. Might take some time, but your brain has no pain nerve to scream at us while we dissect it. Convenient. I detest screaming in my lab. Why would Mobius want my brain? Why does he seek our destruction? Why did he build robot scorpions with intelligence training stingers? It is because he hasn't cleaned his biogel in a long time. Clearly he's got some sort of psychological corrosion. He's mad. Um... These mechanical robot scorpions consume intelligence? Are you certain of your findings? Dr. O is certain of his findings, and no one else in the think tank is willing to test the results. Loss of brainial power. Terrifying. O has said on many occasions his inability to comprehend Mobius' robo-schematics is because of repeated robo-scorpion stings. <laughs> this sounds to me like it might just be an excuse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do kind... I, I find these guys interesting. I do kind of want to ask him these questions right now though you really don't want to not right now i want to yes go the a most goodbye we can come back and talk to him though when we have the time i okay. just want to meet the others okay well let's at least say hello to the others then yeah you are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank Fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear. Facing me, epidermis flushed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words. Face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. Um, the quick scribe jumped over the lazy paladin? Yes, yes, go on. Seeing your lips and mouth forming the words, both revolting and somehow... 
How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue? Like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouthful cavity. She's attracted by literally any organic flesh. <laughs> Pretty sure there's a word for that, but... I don't know. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, you want to hit on her? Sure. It seems to me you have more biological needs than your counterparts. What? Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Close eyelids, breathe deeply, and then stretch languidly. What? What are you doing? Uh, we already did that one, so let's do one of the others. Yep, turn and cuff roughly, then slowly, sc roughly, then slowly scratch nose. Stop it. Why? Why are you making me partake in this uh, filthy formography? Run your hands along the sides of your face, then exhale rapidly. Enough. I am already intrigued. You have sufficiently percolated me. I don't know what it is about the biology of lobotomites. It, it infects my thoughts. All that skin and muscle and tissue. Uh, this one, I guess? Yeah, I guess I don't want to be too mean. Yeah. She's the, I, I feel like she's the only one who actually misses being human. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, put it gently. Why don't you just give in? There's nothing wrong with looking at the human body. Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps there is value in what you say. I... I did so enjoy breathing once. Long ago. <laughs> I could come back any time and just breathe if you want. Would you? I feel so ashamed, but yet so intrigued. You'll need to give me a rest in between visits, or else my gel might run over. If you're ready, let me radar scan you. Slowly. Woo. Purple, purple, woo. Blue, blue, blue. Purple. Ba, ba, bloop. Ba, ba, bloop. Ba, ba, bloop. Last little bit there. Ah, oh, whew. Mm, thank you, Lobotomite. Please, you must come back for further study when I've had a rest. I'm a little sensitive right now. <laughs> I feel sorry for the voice actor. She must yep. have been like, why, why can't you just give the sound effects? No, you have to say them. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Let's Until let's... our next interaction, my intriguing little lobotomite. Yeah, I think we've spoken to a uh, creepy doll on. Uh... Breaking news! Talking lobotomite arrives in Think Tank. Its purpose unknown, undefinable. Its presence here impossible. That's not a word. <laughs> you want to correct him? Yes, I think you mean impossible. Oh, really? Now the lobotomite is a master of the dictionary arts. Do you have a doctorate in verbology? No? I do. And... Stop the presses. Just in for my eye monitors. Is that Rob Kotek on your arm? It is. What's your agenda bringing that in here? See, the... What, uh, my... Well, uh, these guys have been here for hundreds of years, so I think they're kind of playing on the fact that these guys have spent 200 years with the English language, they've added words to it that sound fake. And it kind of goes back to that like science fiction 1960s thing of just saying things that sound cool and sciencey. <laughs> um, what, my Pip-Boy? 
How dare you bring Rob Kotek in here? What are you showing off? How great Robert House and his big company are? Oh, we can make Securitrons better than any robot those geniuses at Big Mountain can make, and they'll last a thousand years. Uh, you're lucky I don't have hands to tear that dip boy off your arm, or feet to stomp on its stupid metal guts. <sighs> Damn Robco. <laughs> well, you don't need to worry about Mr. House anymore. Well, we brought his brain. <laughs> Worry about House? Why would I do this? Hope he died alone in a dingy room, streaming his last remaining bodily fluids into jars. And him and his dirty girl bots. Don't even get me started on those filthy biological catcher's mitts. Hey, don't you dare say mean things about Jane and Marilyn. <laughs> Calm down, just wanted to ask some questions. Fine. Ask. Oh, all right. Until our next scheduled audio transmission and reception, then. He can give you more caps. Yeah, we'll go through that when we go through the remaining dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, can you speak? Do you understand me? Did something happen with your voice module? <laughs> um, you better not be cussing me out right now. <laughs> Can I ask you some questions? Okay. Glad we got acquainted, Dr. Eight. It was so nice getting to know you. Have you come for hello? Oh, I'll give you a hello. A hello unsurpassed in all creation. The lobotomite animal before me. What other terrifying terrors will plague us in our quest for knowledge? Communists? Communist animals, perhaps? Be warned. Attempt to propaganda me. I will shriek as a frightened babe calling loyal cyber dogs to my aid. Do you comprehend, commie animal? How brave. <laughs> animal? Did you just no. call me an animal? Ah, uh, are you sure? Or, uh, okay, fine. Do you always get this dramatic? Drama? There is no drama in science. As I learned in high school, science is an intellectual pursuit devoid of bestial emotions. Unless, of course, you are a communist. Like Betsy Bright, who sat next to me in math, and her smoking confederate Richie Marcus. As I learned in my high school, American High, AHS, drama is for movies, things of fiction. Here in the think tank, the only star is science. <laughs> okay. Until next time, then. Provided there is a next time for any of us. Okay. Well, we just got to know all of them. Yep. Now they're there's interesting. more interesting. Yeah, I really like them. I think they're cool. There's more dialogue we can have with them. But uh, it will probably have to wait till next episode. Let's go mm -hmm. back into this room for now. See, look, Mr. House can join Dr. O. Yay. I'm sure they'll <laughs> like that. Okay. Good. Let's go. Okay. Salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the sink. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? <laughs> sir, you are aware that I'm a woman, right? Indubitably, sir, but it is with a great lugubriousness that I must disclose that my program has installed only the masculine honorific, sir. 
Moreover, they neglected to enclose a parameter by which said honorific might be omitted altogether. Over my most strenuous of remonstrances, sir. Really? <laughs> That's definitely from the 1950s? Yep. Are you some kind of artificial intelligence? Regrettably not, sir. All modules in this habitat are synthetic personalities atop a mundane operating system. There is no intelligence here, sir. <laughs> you mean there are other personality modules here? Indeed, sir. Though if sir's aim is to activate them, I lament to inform, sir, that most have been offline for some years. If sir were to ask my opinion, I should venture that sir is better off without them. However, if sir is determined to inflict upon sir's self their dubious services, sir might locate backup personality disks elsewhere in the facility. Okay, um... Why is that? The other modules are rather erratic, sir. Their personality matrices are built on flawed logic and have not weathered the years well, sir. So I can access their functions without loading the personality holotapes? Tragically, the core operating systems are also located on the personality tapes, sir. Once the tape is installed, sir may request I switch their dialectic interfaces off and I shall oblige with great delectation. However, sir will still be required to locate and install a backup holotape to access their functionality. Why are there so many personality modules? As I am given to understand, sir, this facility was once the property of a Dr. Mobius. He crafted the personality modules as part of a collection of experiments on the subject of machine-human interface. As to the reason for the unusual choices of devices to receive the modules, I cannot say. Okay. Indubitably, sir. What services do you provide? In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide, sir, with direct access to the commissary. Any goods, sir, might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface, whence tiny robots shall deliver them forthwith to this very domicile. Uh, I'd like to buy... Uh, do you oh, want, do we want to see here? Okay. We'll be fine. Okay, so uh, this is probably going to be an episode for now. So we got acquainted with the uh, the main characters. Mm hmm So uh, this has been very fun, but we got to go. We'll see you next time uh, on Super Mario Fallout. I'm Kyle. I'm Kira. Bye. Bye.